Christmas! Today is a very special day. Not because of the presents, not because of the trees, or the mistletoe, and not even because of our sweet savior's birthday celebration. Just kidding. Today is a special day because today is the first installment of a brand new seven minute sermon series called Jesus Blank. In this series, we're going to be tackling different activities that Jesus did throughout his life and ministry. We'll do these installments once a month from now until Easter. And there's no better day than Christmas Day to start with Jesus came. Now we're all pretty familiar with the Christmas story. A baby born of a virgin in the town of Bethlehem, lying in a manger, and shepherds out in the field, and angels appearing everywhere. Gloria, Gloria, in a Chelsea's day. You get it. It's a beautiful story. But what can sometimes happen is this story becomes so commonplace in our lives that we run over some of the most important detail. And in doing that, we actually miss something major that God is trying to get across. You see, the Christmas story is not just a story. It's also a metaphor. It's a picture of what kind of God our God is. Let me explain. Let's look back again at some of the details of this story. First, let's focus on the virgin mother. Now, there are two things that are really important to understand about Jesus's parents. The first thing is that they were an unwed couple. Scandalous! They were pledged to be married to one another, but then Mary gets pregnant by the Holy Spirit before they can tie the knot. It's like God's like a baby daddy or something. And if being pregnant out of wedlock is a bit taboo in our culture today, in the first century, it was absolutely scandalous and shameful. And the second thing we have to understand about Jesus's parents is that they were poor. Very, very poor. So poor, in fact, that scholars say that Mary and Joseph actually couldn't afford to pay the offering of a single goat in order to enter Bethlehem. They had to give two birds instead. And this two bird substitute was something that was only reserved for the lowest of the low, the poorest of the poor. These people were po. P O. They couldn't afford the other two letters. Now let's hash out the second detail in this story. Let's go to Bethlehem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Now Bethlehem is a city in the ancient Middle East near modern day Israel. It's a very small city that sits just east of the Dead Sea and a few miles south of Jerusalem. Now to understand the significance of Bethlehem, we first have to understand the significance of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a holy city for the first century Jews. This was the city where all the religious officials could be found, as well as anyone else of importance. This is where King Solomon built his temple. So it was understood that God dwelled in Jerusalem, inside that temple. Jerusalem was the place to be. And so it would only make sense that if a king was going to be born, if a messiah was going to come, it would only make sense that he would be born in Jerusalem, right? But that's not what happened. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was a very small city with not a lot of rich families and almost no religious officials. Bethlehem was not Jerusalem. In a lot of ways, it was the exact opposite. And yet Jesus was born here. And we're going to talk about why after we unpack the third detail, the shepherds. Now, I know there's a lot of really cool shepherds that we can look up to in the Bible. You got David, you got Moses. But if you were a parent in biblical times, you would not want your kid to grow up to be a shepherd. You see, shepherds were poor, harsh, brutish men who spat and cursed and lived out amongst the fields and the rocks with sheep the majority of the time. These guys were not exactly the cream of high society. And so if a king was going to come, then certainly it wouldn't concern these lowly shepherds that were way out in the field. And yet in scripture, we see that the angel first appears to shepherds, not to religious leaders, not to the rich, not to the government, but to lowly, poor, brutish shepherds. Why, you ask? Well, let's talk about that right now. You see, no one expected Jesus to come the way he did. When people in biblical times thought about a Messiah, 
They pictured a soldier riding a white horse who would come in and gather all the religious leaders and then they would go on a crusade together to conquer kingdoms and build castles. But instead, here's what happened. Jesus didn't come riding on a white stallion. He came to poor parents out of wedlock. He was born not in Jerusalem, but in Bethlehem. And his birth was first revealed not to the religious elite, but to shepherds. You see, we cannot lose sight of these specific details because in these details, God is trying to tell us something very important. What God is saying through the Christmas story is he's saying that this Savior, this Messiah, He's not coming for the righteous or the prosperous or those who have it all figured out. This Savior is for the poor and outcast, like Mary. This Messiah is for people who live on the edges, like Bethlehem. And this gift is for the lowly, like the shepherds. I recently heard a scholar say that Bethlehem is the gospel in a nutshell. You see, the Christmas story is not just a reminder that Jesus came. It's a reminder of who he came for. And Jesus came for those who are hurt, broken, sinful, downtrodden, lost, and suffering. The Christmas story is a reminder that we worship a God who loves to show up in unlikely places and work amongst unlikely people. The Christmas story is a reminder that Jesus came, and he came for us. Thank you so much for watching this seven minute sermon. I hope you all have a merry, merry Christmas. Spend time with those you love, and if you want to, send them this video. As always, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do that, and make sure to tune in next Friday for our final video of 25th. That's all I got for you. Once again, Merry Christmas and keep being awesome.